that's a fascinating story. And I'm wondering, how did you take some of those crash and burn failures that got you grounded? <laughs> Not only did you find loopholes, but how did you use that to propel you forward and to learn? And the answer is, it's searing, and so nobody likes <clears throat> to fail. Failure is not fun, but if you look at it as a growth experience and you chalk it up to, to learning and you don't let it kill you, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Mm. Um, and frankly, until uh, my first you know, version of, of doing this you know, uh, happened in terms of the, the, the corporate failure, um, my life had been an unbroken success. I mean, everything was just absolutely perfect. And all of a sudden, you wake up in the morning and, ah, I've got, you know, <laughs> 125 people and, the, and this, you know, uh, in the middle of the, uh, you know, uh, dot-com crash, we've got a real problem here. And so, woof, the whole thing crashed and burned. And so, sort of, like, I cried myself to sleep, you know, <laughs> that night and then said, okay, now time to put on your big boy pants and, and figure out what to do next um, and try to learn your lesson. So uh, in terms of, of the kind of business, the first time, the first business we had was based on one particular set of content that we were creating. It was broadcasting it out through one particular set of networks to one particular set of devices. Uh, and so um, we said, okay, well, we need to be more generic than that. Mm. And so the next version of the company was actually a platform that allowed multiple sources of content and multiple devices and multiple networks and so on. And a much more robust and, uh, system that, you know, so you learn for the first time. And so this time we actually got it right and nothing could go wrong unless like the entire internet crashed simultaneously on a global basis. What are the odds of that happening? Right? <laughs> um, so when that happened, okay, now you realize the markets are actually <laughs> bigger than any individual company, mm -hmm. but having, you know, this thing was taken out having done it once before. So now yeah. you, 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 you learn from that. And, and, and uh, you know, somebody once said that the, the, the biggest part of life is just showing up uh, and just doing it. And, and, and I've seen too many people who when the first setback happens, they just let it knock them down and they stay down mm -hmm. and, and, they, and they don't get up. But the, the people who survive, you know, it doesn't matter how many times you get knocked down as long as you get up one time more, right? And so that's, that's the essence of, of what you learn from, from failure. And the United States is, is amazing in that. Now, I've spent a lot of time recently um, in Europe and around the world looking at their startup economies. And one of the challenges that entrepreneurs have outside of the U.S. is that the culture is not designed to tolerate failure. Um, right. The U.S. has, we, we are a, a nation of immigrants, we are a nation of entrepreneurs, of, of, of self-made startup companies, a capitalist, free market-based society. Uh, and so therefore, we don't necessarily celebrate failure. Oh, it's, isn't it wonderful that you went bankrupt? <laughs> but we, but we, we say, okay, that's part of the, of the world. And there have been many, many people, many of the biggest successes out there have had failures and setbacks of one kind or another, and then they started again, and they were successful the second or the third or the fourth time. In, in much of Europe, for example, if you fail, in anything, you are permanently tarnished. I mean, you are not allowed to start another company for another seven years. You can't be a director of a public company. You can't raise money. You're personally liable. People, you know, spit on you in the street and shun your children. I mean, it's a, wow. the culture is not designed for failure. And it, there is such a societal, you know, overload that it becomes so terrifying, the risk level becomes so large uh, that you can't do it. And, we're, and one of the things that's now happening as this uh, entrepreneurial innovation culture is spread out from the U.S. to a, around the world is societies are realizing that, okay, even though we're a thousand-year-old country or a society in here, that a lot of this innovation depends on taking risk. And when you take risk, as often as not, you're going to fail. But then provided that you can get up from that and learn from your lessons, you start it again. And that's where innovation comes from.